So sea level is going to be important. It's got to be important. If we have a look at it again, we're now looking up down on, on Sunderland from this perspective. This is a sea level uh, model for actually for Singapore that was produced by Kurt Lambeck for the Singapore region. You won't be able to read it, but basically here's modern sea level, last interglacial 120,000 years ago. Here's the last glacial maximum. This is a little animation. That's at full glacial conditions. And as sea level rose, or dropped, you had a changing set of land bridges and islands depending on sea level at the time. So if, if you are an animal or a human and you arrive at one time, you're going to have a certain set of options in terms of where you can go. If you arrive at another time, you're not. If you arrive at this time, you get to the bottom of Singapore, well, you're going to have to figure out how to swim or make a boat. If you arrived in full glacial conditions, you can walk wherever you want. You can walk to the eastern end of Java if you want to. So there's another, I'm sorry I turned 50 this year. I will put my glasses on for a second. Okay, so there again, the same map, but let's, let's change this to minus 40 metres. This is a good elevation to look at when you start making and losing land bridges. And we'll return to this at the end. Now we have Wallace's line here and, and sort of up through here. You always had to swim across that. There's never been a land bridge. The Balabek Straits are a bit marginal. Um, there may have been a connection, most people think maybe not. It's at an elevation, it's, it really depends on the, the geodynamics of the whole thing. And you probably need an accurate survey. So getting to Palawan, maybe you always had to swim. Over in this part of the world, it's fairly clear that you had several <coughs> options. At minus 50, you lose the connection to Java, except this is where Krakatoa was, and there is, a, there is an idea floating around which somehow doesn't make it into the peer-reviewed literature, so I'm not sure that I believe it, that there was a proto-Krakatoa, which went off in the 6th century, and in fact it doesn't really matter when it went off, it could have gone off 10,000 years ago, if it, if it was really there. And that prior to that, this was not a constraint to movement between Sumatra and Java, so this hole was essentially blown by this volcano. I don't know whether that's the case or not. I tend to think not, given that it's been quite a bit of time to publish something on it, something proper on it. Um, at minus 35 metres, you lose the connection between Sumatra and Borneo. And then up here, about minus 30, maybe minus 25 metres, you lose the connection to Southeast Asia via the Straits of Singapore. Except you don't really. The Straits of Singapore are a recent invention. They were not here during the last interglacial. They've only been here for the last 10,000 years. And prior to that, for maybe 10,000 years, around about 100,000 years ago. Maybe a few thousand years, around 80,000 years ago. The reason I say that is if you look at the bathymetry of the Straits and the geology of the of Singapore, there's no sediments older than last, there's no marine sediments older than last interglacial anywhere. Now there's, there's been a basin out there in theory. There should be however many glacial interglacial cycles there have been until that basin filled up. There's nothing older than last interglacial. That suggests the, the Singapore Straits uh, were formed when the sills east and west were lowered to the point that allowed sea level to rise, uh, to, to actually breach this level here. And if you look at, in detail at the symmetry of the states, you can see the Singapore deeps here, 200 metres deep. That's uh, 80 metres deeper than the glacial sea level. And you see a, a tight paleo channel in here and a broader channel out this end. 